You know, dinosaurs, I guess, roamed throughout Utah and the, and the West. Uh, and it turns out that one of them is still alive in Utah, and that is Senator Orrin Hatch, who I think is trying to align himself back with the sort of popular belief that Republicans are to divide the rich and the poor, because he saw as his colleague Robert Bennett was challenged last time by Mike Lee in a primary, lost that primary, and then, of course, Lee went on to be the senator there at what we can call now a Tea Party senator from Utah. Let's listen to Senator Hatch today and listen carefully as he draws the distinction between poor and rich America and how everybody's got to do their part. And by the way, I'm not saying that everybody doesn't have to do their part here, but singling out the poor at a time of recession, at a time when getting a job is so difficult, at a time when putting a meal on your table is so difficult, at a time when people are spending all their day with two, three, sometimes four jobs trying to feed two, three, and more mouths at home. It is, uh, it's deplorable that someone who is so out of touch with the way that America works on a daily basis uh, can sit in the United States Senator, Senate and say this. This is clip number two, Lucas. I preferred shared prosperity by cutting taxes and giving these small businesses and businesses the opportunity to use that money to hire people and get people working and get more people paying taxes. And I think it's abysmal that the bottom 51% do not pay income taxes. And 23 million of them get refundable tax credits from the government that are far more than the payroll taxes that they might have to pay, which are Social Security payments. All I can say is that we have got to get with it around here. And we've got to start working together as Democrats and Republicans in the best interest of the American people, and that is reforming this awful tax code, getting, getting taxes down for everybody, and taking care of the poor, but also expecting everybody to have some skin in the game, except the really poor. I mean, in fairness, his message was so garbled that it was hard to follow. But what we were able to glean is that he is singling out the poorest Americans for not paying enough tax, for not doing enough, for trying to stay off of the payroll so that they don't have to pay Social Security tax and the like. And that's what I was able to glean from that. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I can give it a fifth or a sixth listen. But all I can see is a senator who is out of touch with the people he is meant to lead. Uh, Orrin Hatch is talking about reforming the tax code, and there is a time and a place for that. Uh, and perhaps, you know, I think that the way that we pay taxes in this country is arcane, not because of the tax limits. Listen, the, the, I, you know, God bless the rich. They are paying less tax now than they ever have, certainly since the 50s. Thank God Ronald Reagan is in office anymore because they'd be paying so much more in taxes. But at least we have Barack Obama in there to keep the tax of the rich down because it it is so good to be rich in America right now because you don't have to pay as many taxes. And if you own a hedge fund, my God, that's the best because you can defer those taxes and you can call those taxes capital gains and only pay 15% on them instead of the whopping 35% that the rich have to pay. Uh, it does seem uh, skewed that, they, that the bottom 51% of Americans don't have to pay taxes, and I don't even know that that's true. But uh, if you want Senator Hatch, to join the bottom 51% of, of Americans. You want to give up your, t your paycheck. You want to give it up so you don't have to pay taxes. I'm sure they're having a fine time, Orrin Hatch. I'm sure it's great to be in the bottom 51% of money earners in this country.